This week on QDL, we look at a COVID-19 workplace app that not only makes your workplace safer, which is important, but also helps prove compliance to new OSHA COVID-19 guidelines and more. So find out more about that when we come back. Welcome back to QDL. QDL is your weekly look at who and what is making news in the world of quality. I'm Dirk Ducharme, Editor-in-Chief of Quality Digest. Okay, finally, hopefully, a lot of you are heading back to your place of work. And if you are, many of you are seeing some really big changes to help your company comply with COVID-19 safety requirements. Now, sometimes these safety requirements are required by the state or by the county. Uh, sometimes they're even required by OSHA. And social distancing and sanitizing requirements are kind of the most prevalent changes that most of you are going to see. But in all cases, companies should be taking these measures because they care about you. They care about their employees. They don't want you to get sick or make others sick. But there are OSHA requirements that also relate to COVID-19, and I, I should say requirements. They're not requirements, explicit requirements to COVID-19, but under OSHA's general duty clause, uh, which requires employees to provide their employees with a workplace free from recognized hazards, likely to cause death or serious physical harm, that covers it. So that the, the, general, uh, the general clause is a very broad thing that basically just says OSHA sa is, is an OSHA requirement that your workplace is safe from recognized dangers. And of course now COVID-19 is recognized danger. So thus your workplace has to be set up to protect the employees from that danger. There is a great document that everyone should download. It's OSHA's Guidance on Preparing Workplaces for COVID-19. It's just what it says. It's a guidance, not a regulation. It's not a standard. There's a lot of really useful information there. I have a link on the player page. Just download that and take a look. I, everybody should download it. It's simple to read. It's 35 pages, worth reading. What we're going to look at today in our uh, Tech Corner today is an app that helps you meet those OSHA recommendations and most important, provide documented evidence, should you need it, that you are providing your employees with a safe workplace as it relates to COVID-19. The app is called COVID-19 EMS, that's EMS for Employee Management System, and it was developed by Ergonomics International. And with us today are Sam Bradbury and Mark uh, Heidebrecht, Managing Partners at Ergonomics International. Thanks for joining us today, guys. Appreciate it. Bet. Thanks for having us. Sure. Hi, Dirk. Uh, and Mark, let's start with you. Why don't you tell us what Ergonomics International is? What do you guys do? Absolutely. Um, Ergonomics International, both Sam Bradbury and myself are board certified ergonomists. We're also board certified by American College of Sports Medicine. And Ergonomics International is a consulting company that provides on-site consulting services as well as online educational products. Uh, we also provide forensic analysis for injury causation and human error, and we provide evidential-based software products that, um, that allows us to use epidemiology data to quantify the true risk of injury. Okay, and what we're going to be looking at today is an app that you guys developed, uh, and, and, and we're, we're going to look at it from a couple different perspectives. We're going to look at it from the perspective of first of the employee, I'm going to pretend I'm an employee, we'll step through what this app looks like for the employee, and then we're going to have uh, Mark and Sam here uh, take us through what it looks like from a supervisor point of view and kind of the, the information they can tease out of it. So I'm going to do a screen share here so you can see my phone. Let me just start my screen share. Start now. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend I am an employee. And if we can get that screen share up on the screen there, Chris. I have a couple choices. Um, I want to go out to my screen that I'm going to use every day as an employee to log my health, my temperature, and so forth. I could create, uh, as I have in the middle of my screen here, a little shortcut. But what we're going to use today is some QR codes that we can just scan and get us where we need to go. So I'm going to bring up my uh, my daily. Close that. Get the ads out of the way. <laughs> Open a browser, and this is what you would see as an employee if it will open up the browser. My phone's being a little sluggish here. Here we go. 
Okay, so every day as an employee, uh, guys, I, I guess I would go in, I would enter my employee ID number, uh, 4321. Uh, I would enter my temperature for day. I take my temperature in the morning before I go to work. And uh, let's say I'm 98.6, I'm your average person. And uh, I'm a long-term employee. And then I fill out um, some of these risk factors um, and symptoms that employees might be required to fill out every day. And I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm not exhibiting any of these symptoms, so I'm just gonna go in and fill this out. No, 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 no. No headache, no sore throat, uh, test or smell. I haven't vomited today, which is good. Uh, no diarrhea, that's awesome. No skin rash, no runny nose, red eyes. Well, probably not fatigue, only because I didn't get to sleep last night. So those, those are all questions that are um, the CDC recommends. That's why those are those are included. Right, and, and I was going to ask. So I'm I'm assuming, guys, that this is that this is modifiable, right? You can add, you can have uh, as many or as few of those as makes sense for your particular company. Is that right? That is correct. Yeah, we can we can uh, customize to meet the standards of the company. Uh, we try to cover just about everything as far as symptoms because you know as you know um, symptoms have been changing along the track so we've added those as needed okay and do i do i actually have to take my temperature uh do i have to do this every day or is that uh is it depend again on on kind of what your job is and so forth the goal is really to track this on a daily basis from the home so that the the worker doesn't show up at the doorstep of the company with a with a fever um and then expose others to that that problem. Okay. So the goal was is to you know have a leading indicator and prevent it, prevent that person from showing up the doorstep. That's why we have them take it at home. Okay. And if if I had entered a temperature of 101 instead of 98.6, this what triggers an alarm or something or an email or what happens if I do that? Yeah, it does. It, um, if you exceed the 100.4 limit it will actually trigger an email to um, the appropriate person at the workplace. That could be your EHS people, it could be your uh, nurse on staff, could be a doctor, it could be whoever you want that email to go to, to at least alert those individuals that this person is having a fever at the present time. And then obviously the app has some component to add instructions if that occurs at the bottom of the page so the employee can go and see what they're supposed to do okay. um, if they have a fever. And and can you set this up so that multiple emails can, can go out? So multiple, maybe HR and... Yes. Oh, okay. And wh why emails instead of text? I mean, I, I, would, I would think that text is a little bit more immediate. Uh, text is probably more immediate, but from a documentation perspective, we chose to use email um, as it Number one, we can get it to multiple people. It's tracked in the email system within the company. It just makes the documentation process a little more audit friendly um, for those individuals if they have to go and show um, how many people had fever or whatever. Uh, it's, it's just a better documentation process for okay. us. Kind of a, the equivalent of a, of a paper trail. Correct, Yeah, that's okay. exactly right. So, um, so I do this every morning. I, you know, I get up in the morning. I scan my barcode uh, as an employee. Take my temperature. Fill out the questionnaire. Uh, then I go to work. So then I get to work. Now, in some some businesses, uh, there also are requirements to verify that the workstation is uh, complies with uh, social distancing and, and sanitation rules and so forth. So I also uh, built into your software is a. Uh, is a checklist for workstations. So I would scan my barcode at my workstation and I would get rid of the ads <laughs> and I would open a browser to send me out there. If Zoom will get out of the way there, there we go. The other okay. reason we went with, with the workstation, um, Dirk, is that there is the, the essence um, from OSHA's perspective as well as employers that this is a, a two-way street and the employees need to be um, accountable as well. So this helps to promote that within the work, workplace. This could be a supervisor or it could be the, empl the employee who actually goes through and, and does this each time so, they hit a workstation. Okay, so, th so that's interesting. This is, this is also, <laughs> in, in a sense, employee feedback that the employer is doing what they need to do to make their workstation safe, right? 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So let's look at. So again, uh, we might we would take our uh, employee ID. So this is me. Uh, wor which workstation? This is. Uh, let's say I'm in assembly. It's an assembly workstation. Um, uh, my temperature today is a little bit higher since I got to work and I'm a long-term employee. So this is when we get to the workstation question. So uh, did the individual wash hands or sanitize prior to starting at this workstation? I would say yes. Uh, uh, is there PPE required at the station? Uh, sure. Uh, is it available? Uh, are, if, if, are physical barriers there? Um, social distancing? And then I notice any notes or comments. And again, I hit submit. Now I'm assuming here that if, there, if I had clicked one of those frowny faces down there that um, that that would have sent an alert as well. Correct. The same process is in place because one of the things you want to do is make sure if if an individual doesn't have the PPE they need at their workstation, that that's alerted to the appropriate people and that gets taken care of immediately. And and so this uh, provides uh, that documentation piece for the for the employer that the employee hasn't said they don't have what they need, um, and and allows them to to keep track of that on a daily basis. And, and uh, as with uh, the earlier questions, you know, you have all these various questions like barriers and so forth. If mm -hmm. those questions aren't appropriate for this particular company or this particular workstation, they could just be, the, 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 uh, the supervisor could just remove those from that questionnaire, right? We can, again, we can customize the, the software to do what that company needs. Um, right now, what we try to do is, is cover all the bases that are included in the guidance document. Okay, um, and the last thing I want to show just as a user is uh, one thing you, you guys pointed out to me is that very often you have employees who as one of their job functions um, are responsible for t sanitizing various aspects of, of uh, either, either the workstation or some workspace or maybe even door handles or whatever. Uh, that's part of their job duties. And so what you guys have done is you've created um, uh, a, a method for tracking and logging whether these touch points have indeed been sanitized. And that's the next thing I want to, uh, want to show here. So I'll go back to my, my barcode scanner. And I'm assuming then you, you would just have, you would have a unique barcode um, on each, you'd have a unique barcode on each touch point. Is that right? Wherever, wherever they want to document that their cleaning has been done, yes. The QR codes can be assigned to each of those particular areas. Okay. So I scanned, I scanned the barcode for this particular area. Now we're going to open up a browser. I want my passcode, so I'll enter that in. I think I have this one right. Oops, wrong passcode. Uh, I believe my passcode was 1111. Was that right, guys? Uh, 112. Two two. Oh, one one two two. Okay. I'll get I'll get it here. Try one two three four. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong employee. Okay. So <laughs> the employee would uh, the employee would enter their their passcode and then uh, just a, a simple one screen. It looks like uh, have you cleaned the location or vicinity? I would say yes. And underneath a smiley face, hit submit. And that would be the end of it. And, and uh, a record of that transaction uh, would then go to, um, let me turn this off here. A record of that transaction would then go to, to the supervisor and, and so forth. So is, one question that came to my mind is, is there some way to notify the supervisor if at the end of a shift, all of the touch points weren't sanitized. In other words, somebody just blows it off. I, I, is there an alarm that comes up and say, hey, you know, it's the end of the shift and you know, touch point number three hasn't been sanitized? Yeah, there's a couple things that we built into this. Um, one is you saw the passcode. Um, the passcode is there to help prevent people just walking by with any kind of camera and scanning the code and, and hitting clean. So these can be assigned to specific individuals who are, are doing the cleaning. But the other, the other thing that happens is if you click no on that, they have to explain why they didn't clean it. So we have a record of that as well. I'll show you that when we get into the, this, the back end of this to okay. track that. 
Well, and then over the day, you can actually look at the hours in which they were cleaned. Okay. And you could you could set this up so that you know if you wanted a hallway to the lunchroom clean before lunch, and then um, between each lunch break, um, you could have that set up to where it would alarm. And then if if that wasn't achieved, it would then send a notification saying, "Hey, after after this break, we didn't have the uh, cleaning scheduled as 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 it was supposed to be done." Okay, um, so let's let's take a look at the back end. So what we we sh what we showed me as as an employee is uh, I take my temperature and enter a questionnaire every single day so that that can be tracked and logged. Um, I go to my workstation. I kind of report back whether my workstation is set up the way it's supposed to be set up. Uh, and then if part of my responsibilities, um, I've got to sanitize areas. I've got the, that kind of that touch point logging uh, that proves that where, whether I've been there or not. So what's this all look like on the back end? So on the back end, we actually set it up so it's actually a, a shift oriented um, method for supervisors so they can see um, their specific shifts if they want. Um, and we can readjust some of these things um, once people decide what they want to do within the system itself. But what it does is it allows us to show data. And you'll notice because of the, the work week I put in here, it started on 6-1, there's only a couple of these in here right now. And you can see that you've entered a couple um, for your ID number. And this green line here is actually the 98.6 line. This is the 100.4 line. And this is our leading indicator line that we've put in there just to track. Because what we're finding is that in a lot of the companies we've been in, the temperatures are actually showing up lower at the doors. Um, the 97.5s to 98s are showing up. And so we wanted to put that in there as potentially tracking a leading indicator. Interesting. Now, the other thing that shows up from the employee side is we have the ability to look at each individual employee based on what they've input. Like this employee is showing up at 100.99. We have the ability to look at, okay, well, all of a sudden they've also in incorporated in a shortness of breath and chills, which then leads us to these symptoms. So now we have the ability to track, oh, they haven't been tested. They haven't had anything done over here on the, the employee risk factor side, but now they're starting to show symptoms. So we have this early indicator of symptom, symptom technology going on here. Um, in your case, basically we don't have anything, but you've actually entered a lot of data in here so we can actually track you over a longer period of time. The thing that this software does, I, I've been into quite a few facilities um, during, during the outbreak and a lot of my clients are gathering temperature, but they're not documenting it. They're not keeping track of it. So it doesn't allow them to actually see that trending of an individual that, oh, they've actually gone up one or two degrees um, over the past week. It's interesting. Now, I mean, one thing as, as you guys are talking about that you're collecting, <laughs> you're, you're collecting essentially medical information on employees, right? You got their, you got their temperature, you're collecting symptoms. Um, doesn't uh, healthcare privacy, doesn't HIPAA come into play somewhere in all of this? I mean, how do you guys deal with that? Yeah, there's a couple of things that, um, HIPAA really comes into play uh, after someone has been tested. So in those scenarios where we have someone marked as tested, that information would then be sent to a healthcare provider and the healthcare provider only, okay? Where we're only, where we're collecting temperatures, um, and the symptoms here, that is still not covered by HIPAA. That doesn't mean it's gonna ch not change in the future, okay? We've already seen some changes occur in the past few weeks. So that may be covered, and at that point, our system will then be allowed to only send it to the occupational health nurse or whoever the company assigns as being compatible or capable of seeing HIPAA-related documentation. Gotcha. The, the other key point there is we don't have a name attached to this. It's it's only employee Correct. ID number. Oh, okay. And so I think that's the the key with HIPAA is that we don't have a name attached. It's just the employee ID number. Right. So, so the we have no identifying components other than the ID number. So you would have to have access to that employee's ID number uh, as well as understand this system to um, get in there and see what's going on with them. I, th I thought it was interesting the the being able to over time track you know what, an employee's temperature uh, over time and, and trending like that. Is that is that 
anything that might be automated in the future where if there was a, a, a certain trend an alarm might go up or is it just strictly just uh, you know the HR person or the uh, you know the the health person on site uh, looks at that and just kind of keeps track of it on their own well I think there's a couple components to this this temperature thing as well um, what we don't have right now is the data on the tr the changes in environmental conditions so as companies head into summer right and in high humidity areas and things like that are we going to see a change in this this temperature tracking system so there's still a lot of open um, space on this as well. Okay. Now you, uh, you had showed me something also, uh, maybe you're, uh, I'm sorry if I'm jumping the gun here. Um, you had showed me something early on, on symptomology. And symptomology. Yeah, so with the symptoms, we can actually keep track of what symptoms the employee is exhibiting and, and see if there, if there are any new symptoms um, and, and those sorts of things. And those can, can um, lead to triggers as well. The other piece of that that we can also keep track of in, in that once a vaccine comes out, that can be logged into the system that this person's been vaccinated or if we find out that it, an individual that has had COVID um, is truly immune to COVID, um, we can tra keep track of those individuals so that down the road, if we have another outbreak, um, we actually know who of our workforce is immune <laughs> to it and who can keep working. And, and oh, that's interesting. Shift people around. Um, that's uh, that's that's pretty. That's and, and what about what about? Um, can you track which symptoms seem to be more prevalent than than others? I mean, imagine you got all sorts of ways to slice and dice. Uh, all right, we can slice and dice, but you can look here and right on. The, this is a single employee record where we have shortness shortness of breath, and then suddenly we have a loss of taste and smell. So that's a critical finding. If we start to see loss of taste and smell, then you know maybe that's a trigger that we move that person to an isolation area. Um, and what what about uh, what about the data that you've collected on? Oh, what, what was that? What was that bar chart thing? You just you uh, not okay. that one, but uh, yeah, this one. Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. There's also an audit functionality within this that goes deeper, which we won't cover today. But it actually looks at more of the administrative controls for an audit process, okay. uh, looking at engineering controls and administrative controls. And that's what this, this particular bar chart is for, looking at it by workstation. But the, the component that you put in from the hygiene perspective about with the smiley faces and whether they had PPE or not, now we can actually look at this from a workstation perspective and tells us whether we have physical barriers. Now, remember that if you click no, that's when you're gonna show up on this graph. It's, it's not, your normal okay. graphic. So this tells you that you need to start looking at these areas, okay? Interesting. We so can track symptoms over time. Um, this is actually the total number of symptoms over the past 24 hours. All of the COVID questions that we have in the beginning are tracked. I mean, engineering guidance. There's a lot of different data that we can put in here and it just depends on the individual wants uh, for their dashboard. Okay. Um, that's interesting. I mean, uh, uh, in, unless there's something you want to show me back on that screen, maybe you can just stop sharing and, uh, unless there's something else you wanted to show me. There you go. Okay, perfect. Um, so we've been looking at this as if we're talking about one facility. So can you put this in multiple facilities and share share that data so that maybe as an organization they can keep track of what different facilities different sites and different parts of the country uh, are doing or maybe as an aggregate how their employees are doing i think that's probably an important component when you're looking at sharing employees uh, you know a lot of these the the nursing homes had issues where they were working in multiple sites and that was we didn't really have the ability to track those individuals as they came in the door so yes, um, that's one aspect of it. But yeah, we can build this to basically track as many facilities as you need to and put a regional or a departmental or you know, even a, a global uh, look at your COVID compliance. Right, and what about, uh, you know, at, at the top of the hour, I mentioned that, at least in my opinion, one of the, one of the values of this type of software is documentation, is, at some point, if there is, I don't know, an outbreak uh, within a facility or an employee gets, gets sick, 
uh, OSHA may come by and say, so, uh, how, how, prove that you were doing your job, prove that you were protecting this employee. This really provides kind of uh, an electronic trail that you were doing everything that OSHA required, other requirements required, right? Yeah, I think that's really the, the key with this software. What, what I see as one of the largest values is that this provides that documentation piece and um, it, it allows us to show that we've done our due diligence. We have, we have um, you know, unfortunately this virus is very contagious. You know, um, this isn't a vaccine. It's not gonna kill the virus or not allow us to get it. But what will allow us to do is show that the company has done what they can to prevent the spread of this, which is really what we need to do under the general duty clause. Right. And and for the uh, for the companies that you've uh, that have uh, brought on this 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 software, if you know what is what was their motivation? Was it cover their rear ends, or was it that they saw it just really as a useful tool for keeping the business running? I think it's really twofold. Um, one is that it does show that the company cares about their employees and we want to keep us keep us well, keep us working. Um, but it also provides that documentation piece so that if there is an outbreak, we can show that we have done what we need. So I think it, it, it really covers both of those elements from a cultural perspective, showing value in the employees and wanting to keep everyone well. From a from a legal standpoint, it provides that documentation that's going to be necessary to show that you know we're doing what we can to we want we need to keep running. Um, I work in the a lot in the food industry, and those are those are facilities that haven't shut down. They're they're in this entire outbreak, and um, you know it, it it also shows, but also provides guidance because now you're actually able to engage that employee in the process. Say, hey, do you have what you need? If not let us know and we'll get it to you. So it really provides that, that encompassing uh, solution that needs to be there. Okay. Now the important question is, is what's this cost? I mean, it's got, seems like it's got a lot of functionality. Uh, we didn't even get into the reporting aspects of it. A uh, lot of configurability on the back end. Who is going to be able to afford this? Is it, is it an expensive product? We actually, we, um, Sam and I like to say we built this for a small business because that's who we are. We built this for a small business or built it for a corporation, but it's affordable by a small business. And so um, we both work in companies that have you know, 60, 70 um, different facilities across the United States. And so we built this so that it can service a large corporation, but it's affordable by a, a small business. So it's just $199 a month. Um, and so you can use as many or as as few of the features as you want, whatever works for your facility. So it's a, it's a site license, not a, 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 a per user? Correct. Okay. Yep. And, and so for obviously for multiple facilities, then you're going you're gonna to do that uh, $199 a month per facility? Correct. To right. be clear. Okay. All right. Um, who's, so, so far, who's shown, um, who's shown an interest in it? I mean, what, what types of industries, or it has been across the board? Um, really across the board, um, yeah, lots of different, really yeah, lots of different industries. Um, like I said, I work a lot in the food processing industry. Um, we've had a lot of interest also in distribution centers where you may not have the the guarding necessary, but you you have the social distancing already in play, and so um, it could really be adapted for for many different types of industry. And you mentioned you mentioned earlier, and this be my kind of my my, fault, my ending question here is you mentioned earlier this is specific you know it's right in the the name of the software for COVID nineteen, but there's really no reason why it couldn't be used in a more general purpose way, right? Just in in general for you know any kind of outbreak or just for sanitation purposes or whatever, right? I mean it doesn't it doesn't have to be linked just to COVID nineteen. No, we've actually designed this off a of previous functionality of um, an encounter software for safety, uh, looking at slips, trips, and falls and things like that. So it's very adaptable, very flexible. Uh, we could track outbreaks. We could track you know specific functions within a building, specific cleaning techniques. Um, even you know from a quality perspective, you know was something done or not done. Okay. Well, guys, I appreciate uh, look, it's, it's, it's an interesting little product, and I should say easy easy to use if you don't have a bar barcode um, scanner. Um, you can always, like I said, create a uh, um, 
like I had it on mine, a little shortcut to your desktop that brings up each of those things that we scan. Barcode scanner is kind of a neat way to do it. Uh, well, Sam and Mark, uh, managing partners at Ergonomics International, uh, thanks for joining us today. That was interesting, I appreciate that. Great, thanks for having us. Okay. Thanks, Dirk. No problem. And there are links. Um, there are links out to uh, the Ergonomics International underneath the player page down there. Um, there's also a, a video, <clears throat> or at least one video on one of those pages. You can take a look at that as well. Um, and also, there is a link to that OSHA document, that the 35-page OSHA document that I recommended. I recommended that everybody downloads that. And actually, I think if you if you read what OSHA is requiring or is the guidance, I'm sorry, the document is not a requirement, but if you look at what OSHA is saying in that document <clears throat> and then look at what uh, the software does, you can see how they correlate. It really is a way to kind of go through the checklists that uh, OSHA has and make sure that you're uh, kind of dotting the I's and crossing the T's. So. That is it for our show today. As usual, if there is someone or something you'd like to see on the show, just let us know by sending an email to qdl at qualitydigest.com, and uh, I will do my best to cover those topics on this show. That is it for today. Thanks for joining us. We will see you next week on QDL. So long.